Yes, that's new. I've never heard that announcement before. Yeah, um, nice. Okay. Welcome, everybody, uh, to our RUAC Spoon Challenge 21. Our template uh, this time is a it's a it's a spoon minus the handle and slightly larger. So it's our bowl challenge by uh, Mr. Matt Day uh, in Massachusetts. So um, Matt, I'm going to ask you just to tell us a little bit, just brief, you know, how how you came around developing this sort of bowl form. Which, by the way, when I carved mine and showed it to my wife, she was like, oh, "I love that shape. I love that form." And I'm like. All credit to Matt on the design because I literally followed your template to the T or tried to. <laughs> yeah, it's All been right. fun seeing everyone. Um, yeah, no, I think it started with wanting to do something smaller that wasn't so um, much of a commitment as like the big Scandinavian, you know, swooped ones and kind of started with Dave Fisher's fine woodworking article on a breakfast bowl. Um, and I wanted to try to do a few shapes that I could kind of. Um, get into being like a stock shape that I could, you know, post online and kind of have there. And, you know, I found ellipses just a easier to carve um, than the circles made it obvious that it was carved, not, um, not turned. And I kept experimenting with height and size and, you know, the medium one in particular really fits in your hand, holds, a, you know, a cup, cup and a half and, it's um you know kind of gone from there um so this was the one i kept i'm actually doing a market later so i uh, have most of them packed but i've been doing this kind of feathery i see people say leaves and this has been maple that i burned on the outside after i carve it um and then more smooth and white on the inside so I really love it. I love that that kind of free flowing pattern like that. Really, really cool. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, the grain wants to go straight. So it's a little bit tricky when you start going off on direction. But, um, you know, if you if you don't go too far, you can you can get there. But mm. really excited to see what uh, everyone else came up with. How do you go about doing that burn? Is it just uh, a torch? A yeah, the torch, torch right behind me on the, on the, oh, yeah, on the yeah. counter there. Just, okay. a, just a propane torch. Very cool. Awesome. All right. Well, Matt, I just, I've just i really enjoyed, uh, even though I haven't been able to do as many as I wanted, I only got the one done myself. Um, but uh, because I very unwisely chose to do mine in rock hard, bone dry, black walnut, um, it it was a, a joy to do, but it was a challenge because of that. Uh, it was quite hard. So yeah, Greenwood is definitely the recommended approach on this, folks. Um, all right. So with that introduction, then uh, I'm going to open it up as per usual. If uh, anybody uh, needs to go early uh, because you have other commitments that you need to get signed off for, uh, please just wave your hand if you'd like to go uh, first. Um, and if you, even if you don't have to go early, if you just want to go, uh, wave your hand, please, because I need to see you in order to call on you. All right. All right. So we've got Sonny and Dominic. It looks like you're, you're wanting to go. So I think I saw Sonny first. So uh, Sonny, take it away. Thanks, Chuck. So in exactly the opposite direction of Chuck uh, saying he followed the template to a T, I did not follow the template at all. Um, <laughs> and I made a, you know, kind of handled bowl. I tried to do some radi radial facets around it or you know channels. They didn't end up as even as I like and I kind of got frustrated at that. Um, but I, I still need to oil it and finish it off. But this was my attempt at making a small hand sized bowl. The special thing about this log is it was from Ron. So it has a tie in to, to, to rise up you know, before nice. it's in a bowl. Um, so I wanted to, to make sure I'm to post a picture and tag Ron in it when I get it up, uh, oiled up later today. And, uh, yeah, it was my attempt at, you know, keeping up with carving, even though I've got a lot more busy schedule now that the weather's nice and everybody's kind of back to some activities, but yeah. you know, thanks for, for doing this, Matt. I appreciate the, the work you put into it. And, uh, you know, here's my little attempt at making a, you know, small hand sized bowl. Beautiful. Is that cherry? Yeah, it's cherry wood. Yeah. Really nice. It, it dried without cracking, which was, I think was the, my biggest accomplishment, you know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Fantastic was, job. 
Thanks. And, 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 and a huge thank you, but once again, Sonny, for all the work that you do putting our templates together and, and posting up on our website. I really, really appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, and I, I, I mentioned this before, before we started the recording, but for the benefit of anybody watching after the fact, uh, you can find all of our spoon challenge templates up on riseupandcarve.com. There's a page there called challenge uh, that you can go to and you'll find all of the PDFs that are freely downloadable, printable, et cetera, for you guys to uh, work on if you'd like. And I'll go ahead and announce our, our next challenge, Ruax Spoon Challenge 22, uh, is back to an eating spoon. And in this case, it is a, a gorgeous uh, a shape by uh, Mr. Dan Lawrence uh, from the UK. Uh, and it's you know classic Dan Lawrence. Everything is asymmetric. Um, and it, it's going to be a challenge, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So yeah, check it out. And thank you so much for putting that together quickly for us this week, Sonny. Yeah, and as a short fun fact, uh, next week is one year anniversary for the, the website. A year ago, we registered oh, wow. the domain and uh, started doing the hosting and it had, it's had a few changes over time, but uh, you know, it's been nice to have a central location for all those things and a place to send people to get templates because I think Chuck was getting tired of, of emailing them and messaging them to people um, for the first time. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to send them out individually to people, and uh, as more and more people started coming in and doing it, it, it got a little crazy. But um, and, and in fact, I meant to mention also we we passed our one year anniversary of doing these challenges. The first one uh, was our our pocket spoon by Don Nalagetti, who kind of pushed us to get this going and up and running. And so thank you out there to Don for kind of kicking us in the button and getting us going on this. Uh, it, we, I think the first one, I forget the exact date, but it was in early May, I think, or early or mid-May when we did the first one. So yeah, we've gone, we've gone around. I think we got 20 in, in, in the one year space. I so point people to the, I point people to the website all the time. It's great to have it there. as a Yeah. It, it's a huge help. <laughs> it's taken so much weight off of my shoulders. So thank you, Sonny. Yep. So very much. Very grateful. Yep. Thanks everyone. All right. Poggy. So, um, made this one. Uh, so I started with a, a cherry bowl, but um, it was just um, hard and some pieces were rotten. And I thought, well, I have to, to try another one. And um, so I started with a bigger one in, in a cherry and, um, but I haven't finished it yet because um, I have to work the bigger one on a workbench. So I made this one yesterday. It's plum. And I was hoping that the plum would, would be a nice grain because then I thought my carving wouldn't be <laughs> as necessary. <laughs> That's right. If you, can't, if you can't dazzle them with spectacular carving, uh, you know, dazzle them with this spectacular grain. <laughs> yeah. And um, so I, was, I had to carve this one there away in there as well and the whole piece is um because so the template had to fit in the piece of wood so i had to make it um like this yeah yeah and um so the direction would be so it's not like it's not like the grain direction. It's a little bit um askew. Like okay. This. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's a nice little bowl. Uh, Matt, thank you very much. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, just the part where you have to carve the end grain wasn't, <laughs> wasn't so much fun. I have a few blisters now in my hand, but that's fine. And um, yeah, it's a cool little project, and I hope I will have some time in the future to make to to try some bigger bowls as well. Awesome! So, colleague of mine wants wants a bigger bowl for salad, so um, yeah, yeah, we'll try. That's the that's the danger with posting pictures of these bowls. Now all of a sudden, people on who are following you, they're gonna want them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It could be worse as well, so that's fine. Indeed. Yeah. Excellent job. Just to that it looks a bit more interesting. Um, 
was carving some and you can see that yeah 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 and i saw it on scalloping your along the chuck. edges yeah yeah i saw it on your picture chuck and i thought uh, i found it quite nice and uh, yeah give it a try yeah yeah it's fun the, i found that when i was doing that and you probably i don't know if you found it the same but i found with mine going along the long edges um along these long edges on the side i've got you spotlighted still so people might not be able to see it easily but uh the grain just wants to tear because you're going right along the grain so yeah. you got to do the whole almost chase the grain coming at it from each side to try and meet you know well in the middle that was tough yeah cool all right great job excellent well done thank you all right let me switch back to gallery view john i saw that you got your hands up so why don't you take it away yeah you got to unmute yourself though Here I am trying to use it as a touch screen because I've been working on my wife's computer with a touch screen and now I'm going all over mine. I, all right. I, I hate that. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it was a fun challenge. Thank you, Dan. Uh, and I really enjoyed watching your, um, uh, your video on how you did it. Um, I decided on a piece of, I had a scrap piece of walnut around the house, and it, this just was the final result. I kind of just did a random gouging around the edge. You just got to hold it up a little bit higher because you're off camera. There, there you go. Sort of a random gouging around the edge and I was really trying to figure out how to hold it down on the workbench so I came up with this Whoop. so I could put it in here yeah let's put a picture of it up yeah I saw that on Instagram that was brilliant really smart move I like that a lot and then then so I could a lot of times I could hold it down with my thumb but I could use my my dog on it too, and it uh, it stopped the darn thing from sliding all over the place. Yeah. And uh, I realized later that uh, you know a later piece of wood would have worked better because <laughs> walnut is dark and the burning is dark. So, but it was a wow, lot. Of beautiful. And. Uh, yeah, I plan on doing some more. This is the only one I got done. But again, yep. thank you very much, Matt. It's a wonderful, wonderful fun. Awesome. Excellent job. And that was a brilliant idea for a jig. Really, really like that. Okay, who would like to go next? Wave a hand. All right, Jurgen, and then Steve. Just remember to unmute yourself. Okay. Yeah, so I got, um, I did three bowls. Um, the first one I did was uh, a small, I had a piece of maple, and about that oval, let's see if the light's better, that light, oval shape on it. Nice. And um, it was really good. Oh, I like the outside, yes. Yeah, nice texturing. Texturing it, so, yeah, so what Matt was doing with the, little gouges and um, went through that and yeah I like the the burning makes it pop to have um, done that so yeah that was it nice looks like you've elongated <clears throat> the oval a little bit it almost looks like when you look at it just straight on from the top uh, or the bottom uh, it looks like a, like almost like a big ostrich egg type of thing you know yeah it was kind of where the I think a little bit of the shape of the log that I had yeah uh, I like it though it's really nice yeah, because I still got some of the, the original log, um, you know, just under the bark there. That color yeah. is, is still, I was able to keep some of that still. Nice. There. Um, and yeah, I had a little cracking, but then I was I was able to cut cut that cracking pot off. Yeah. Um, up at the edges. And then, Very nice. 
Then I did um, two, basically two spoons here, uh, two other bowls that were done out of the same um, log. I basically had split out the log and then uh, got side by side yep. um, bowls out of it. And the first one's a little bit, bit the, this one was a little, I wasn't sure how it was going to go because it had a nice big knot coming, coming through it. And yep. I was, I was a little concerned it may crack through yeah uh, or split the split the bowl but it, it held and then this one i just did the marking with the hook knife it's a little bit bigger and i just um yep. used my hook knife to create a little bit of a texture on the back as well i like it that's a you know decent size larger medium bowl i guess and then and then i did the, out of that other one the smaller one this one did, I did have a bit of cracking at the top, so it ended up coming out a little smaller, but, you know, as long as the crack doesn't go, I guess, all the way, yep. I was able to um, just cut that, cut that bit off of it. And it's beautiful. Looks like you got that uh, a bit thinner than the other ones. Yeah, this one's, yeah, this one, yeah, I got, it's nice and thin. Yeah. Um, all the way through, it's pretty thin. And um, it's kind of funny is when it, when you thinned it out, it almost cups the wood, you know, when it was yeah. drying out. So I had it then, and then when I noticed when it dried, it kind of wanted to- Yeah, it's fold. gonna deform, yep. Yeah, fold fold in on itself. It was kind of cool. Um, and then I was happy how that, I marked that one up similar to the other one, which I, yeah. I was I liked, so. Yeah, really, really nice job. You can actually end up playing with how you put it in the log to get it to deform a different way like i think that one you had was the ends down the ends went lower uh -huh. and if you put in a log you know a different way tangential radial you can get it to go you know saddle one way or saddle the other so that's yeah. good you know you can start to play with that to to get you know some interesting shapes yeah do you, do you, do you always have to do it they're fairly thin to get it to yeah the thinner the more it'll go but yeah it was, I, I was, yeah, I had gotten this one thin and it was nice how it started to really form out. It's probably, I would think it's probably less susceptible to cracking as well, right? If it's going to move and you leave it a little thicker, you might be more susceptible to it cracking. Oh yeah, no, that's, that's the key. You know, the yeah. thinner you get, the less cracks, um, cause it, it will move, it will shape instead of crack as the stresses build up. Mm. Do you always, do you find that you have to when you before you dry it is to make sure that the on one of my had cracked but when i went to cut off i realized i had left it a little thicker than the rest of the the bowl is is that always a kind of a cause for getting it to crack too um one of them i mean the thicker the faster it dries and the more uneven are all you know contributors to cracking yeah i had a I had a conversation with Bull Turners at the Seattle Spoon Club on Sundays, and they think that the bowl being consistent is the key to it not cracking. The 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 walls being a consistent thickness, because when Bull Turners turn blanks, turn green blanks, they actually leave them quite thick, inch yeah. and a half, two inches thick. But they think it's the the bowl being a consistent thickness all the way around is key to it not drying. So there's another aspect to it yeah that's I, I was kind of having a feel because a few times i've done the bowls i've noticed oh i left it a little thicker than the rest of it and it it, it was my perception that that was contributing to the um the issue so yeah. it's good well, it's good thank thank you awesome thank you great job all right uh hold on let me go back some uh steve that's right we said we were going with steve steve take it away oh hello out there in zoom land so uh matt thanks for uh doing this i learned a lot from your uh from your demo um i am not apparently not much of a uh template follower <laughs> uh I, yeah but um, you've been you've been affected too much by russell and his rebel ways <laughs> <laughs> But uh, 
uh, one thing that I that I that I that I did enjoy from your demonstration was the idea of working in series and and cutting them out, you know, cutting several out of the log at once. Um, hmm. Uh, and then you know playing with the playing with the shapes on a you know in terms of you could you know uh, modify the detail and stuff like that. Um, I wanted a uh, more of an ale bowl shape, so I put handles on this, which then I'm going to chip carve uh, here. And uh, this is some of that yellow birch that spalted. And I had several other bowls that just, they got, uh, ooh, I'm gonna say too spalty. Mm. So uh, uh, they ended up just so punky that um, uh, they, were they were unusable. I mean, I still have them and now they're dry and they're kind of crusty and crumbly at the same time. So. Well, that one looks beautiful. I don't know. This one came out. This one came out nice. It's a nice shape. Uh, uh, I think it was done. It was done top down, uh, bark down. You know, from bark down, and uh, it came out well. Yeah, it looks fantastic. So I have uh, six or seven bowls that um, I did over the winter that are now dry and ready for finished cuts. And I'm just a little scared to like get in there and finish them. So I was hoping that I would be inspired today by all y'all to uh, actually, you know, finish some up and, and, uh, and get some ideas to, uh, to uh, get going again on those. So thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Well done. All right. Jump back out to my gallery view and I see Joan waving. So Joan, you are up next. Great. Well, I found this uh, challenge being incredibly intimidating because I don't have any of the <laughs> right um, uh, tools. I sit in my living room and carve and do a lot of vacuuming. Um, so I don't even have any clamps. But then I discovered that Matt Day actually lives in my same hometown. I think his he lives about half, half a mile from me. So I thought, OK, you know, I have to do something um, uh, for the team. So I had a, um, I was uh, pruning a, some Vitek, which is the chase tree um, in my backyard. And I thought, um, having watched all of you folks for the last few months, I knew that I could do a 21.1. Uh, um, so here it is. Um, <laughs> and, and I did actually, I don't know if you can see, but it, it has this wonderful green color. It comes out like green marble. And I, I yeah. really liked the way um, uh, the grain came out. And, um, and you know, it, it is actually really useful. Um, you can see, you can Love it. Have, have some M&Ms in it. Um, so even this little one was a real challenge, but I want to thank Suzanne because she actually posted um, on Instagram a small bowl and that gave me the idea, okay, I knew I could yep. do a, a 21.1. I and was, so was going to try and do that myself. I was going to try and knock yeah. one out this morning from a tiny blend that I had. And I was just so tired this morning. I was like, I am not putting sharp tools in my hands. I'm going to, I'm going to cut myself. Great yeah. job. That looks fabulous. So this was, yeah, that was, so it was really actually a ton of fun, but Matt, I heard at the beginning, you said there's a, a market that you're going to today. So I'm not giving any of my bowls away to people, but I do have some presents I need to give. So if you could tell me now where the market is. Yeah, it's at Landsake. Landsake Farm over in Weston. I'll uh, I'll grab you I, on I, I know I know exactly where that is, um, and I'll I'll see you later today. That's so Wonderful. awesome! I wish I, I, I grew up in Wayland, so I would have been oh. going there today too. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was it was just great to see that because I, I I do love this because we're all over the world, but to have somebody who's uh, just down yep, the road, right down the road, exciting. That's awesome. Well done. Great job. I have a question about your tiny bowl. Yes. I have found I have found I've carved a couple of tiny bowls from offcuts like that, and I've found that they really capture the imagination. When I show them to people, people immediately tell me what they would do with that bowl, like unasked for. They would be like, "Oh, I'd use that for yeah." Like I yeah. find that people love those little tiny bowls. Yes, I was actually given the M and M's because I was told, "Well, this is a perfect bowl for the the M and M's." There you go. There you go. Yeah, they're neat. Nice. All right. Excellent job. Who would like to go next? All right, Patrice. 
All right, in the vein of tiny bowls, I guess mine's also a 21.1. So I made a very small bowl. <laughs> I put a little, um, I guess, handle slash cord holder on it. And then I painted it because I realized I made my bowl too small to do the gouge work. So this wow. part is too thin. I could have done some gouge work on the side and then I got lazy, so I just painted it. It looks I love your paint job. So this is a very small bowl out of cherry. And it turned out pretty That's well, beautiful. but it turned out spectacularly well. Just, here's the small <laughs> template, and I carried this around looking for a piece of wood wow. that I could use, and I did not make it. So that's why I have this very small bowl. But as I showed on the post, like it holds, yep. you know, three little burnishing, burnishing stones Nice for now. But I, I feel like, yes, many snacks will be apportioned in this size. And, uh, you yeah, did a thanks, beautiful Matt. job on it. I, I love the I, little uh, the little handle with the lanyard. I think it's a great idea. Right. So it's like a spoon and a bowl that you can carry around. You could yeah. Maybe get like or a or, or it could even be like a little shot glass, like a little uh, noggin. So. Yeah. A yep. little whiskey bowl. A yeah. Little snack a bowl. bowl. For a small bowl that doesn't have an everyday job but has a sometimes job, that would be perfect because you could hang it on the wall and then it wouldn't kick around onto your counter, taking yep. up room and space and clutter. That that's yeah, a good idea. Yeah, that's I'll a good idea. Hang it on. Let, let me ask you, how did you come up with the idea for your painting on there? Like what like what led you to go with that those shapes, like the the honeycomb type? Mm, I don't know if you could see it in my background there but I have a lot of paintings with hexagons and probably okay. a good dozen paintings with hexagons on them so I figured why don't I migrate those to some of my wood I love projects it. so. it's, it's 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 really a fact I, I just I love the way that you did it on there with it being a a the fact that you kind of broke the shape up a little bit so that they're a little you know it's got that that sort of Japanese asymmetrical but balanced feel to it. And that and the gradient of the, the color shift across the, the hex, I, I just, it's really beautiful, really it's well reminiscent, done. It's reminiscent too of the facets that you might make with a knife on the outside of a bowl. So it's kind of mm. kind of cool. Yeah, well, a really neat idea. Also, also the curve kind of dictated like how straight I could keep going and mm. it wasn't going straight so I decided to break it up but yeah all of my I would say 75 percent of my paintings use the this color and so I thought it would just match well with everything else that I it's funny because like in looking at it right now I just realized it sort of almost looks to me like I'm looking through portholes in a spaceship looking back at planet <laughs> earth from outer space I don't know why, <laughs> That just struck me. I, maybe maybe I'm just overtired. <laughs> I'm yeah, glad that I it's been a sparking that. imagination. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm a, I'm not taking drugs. I swear. <laughs> really, yeah. really cool, Patrice. Let's, let's call them herbs. <laughs> All right. Excellent, Patrice. Well done as always. All right. Who would like to go next? Wave a hand. All right, John. Hey, everybody. This is mine out of Apple. Nice. Uh, I am really deep. Wow. Probably the complete opposite of Patrice's. It's too big. It's bigger than the uh, templates that Matt provided. But I just kind of kept the shape of the log. I really, I just wanted to use as much of the material of the log as I could. So it's a, it's a little bit narrow and long. Okay, I love but, it. Uh, the the uh, gouging on the side that was just really really fun. I'm glad we I'm glad we decided to do this, do a bowl because. Uh, 
other than all the work to get it down to a decent thinness, um, that was a lot of work, but the result. Your, your sides seem pretty steep. I mean, that's quite, it looks quite thick, like quite deep. Um, did you, did you run into any challenges getting uh, that hollowed out? Yeah, it's, um, it's almost two inches deep and yeah, Rachel, gave me all kinds of grief about how deep that was and how much time I spent getting that, but <laughs> I eventually got it. Yeah, you did great. I love so it. I had a, I have a big bench vise that was able to, to hold it without crushing it. And then I made the, the, the clamping stand that Matt showed us and yep. that really helped a lot. So between the two, other than the, the initial reduction, it was fun. Yep. Awesome. Great job. Thank you. All right. Let me uh, jump back out to the gallery view. And who would like to go next? All right. Annika and then Andreas. Whoops. What hey. Hold on. Oh, I hope you can hear me because my Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, I've got you. Okay, I hope you can hear me. My internet connection is not the best. It's okay, a little so... choppy, but we can we can okay. get by. Yeah, and and also my bowl is not finished yet, but I I'm gonna show it anyway <laughs> because sure. I really had fun doing this, and although it was a bit hard, also I I had some wood with um with a few knots and. Yeah, it was very strange to carve. Um, yeah, it's still pretty rough, but uh, strange, strange because of the knots. Yeah, because of uh, parts of it were like really soft and dry already, and and the parts with the knots were really hard and and dense and yeah. Mm. So some of it was like open pore. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, really strange at wood to carve. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was still really rough. And then I um, remembered I bought this mini mini scorp recently. So I I used that texture to texture the, it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And, yeah, and it was also a good like lazy way to to mask the rough outside because it's not even at all, but with all the tiny like marks, yep. it looks better. <laughs> so Very yeah, nice. um, still have to do the bottom and I want to do some milk paint, but yeah, uh, it was a really nice challenge. And um, I also built myself like a little device for uh, clamping it to the table. Yep. And, um, I could, yeah hold the lock and just fix it with some wedges. Very nice. Like a very simple thing and build. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, so yeah. What kind, what kind of wood was it? What a challenge. Um, it's, wait, um, in German it's Kugel Akazie and the Latin name is Rubinia pseudo acacia um, or something like that. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> blackthorn. Blackthorn? It's blackthorn? No, no, it wasn't blackthorn. It's well Kugel Acacia, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Acacia no uh, Rubinia pseudo acacia, that's yeah extremely hard so well done yeah it's, i was gonna say it sounds like it's a hard wood <laughs> i think it's a mix between acacia and uh and black locust oh uh, yeah black locust oh. yeah. that's yeah. that's one yeah wow and black locust is in german uh Rubinie, so um okay. that's tough wood yeah black locust is hard hard wood Awesome, fantastic job. Yeah. 
All right, Andreas, you wanted to go next? You got to unmute yourself. Sorry. Well, okay. as you probably all know by now, is that I uh, cut down a, uh, a walnut tree in my parents' garden last year. And I'm staying, still going strong on the wood there. Um, last time I was there, um, I took some wood with me and I made this bowl. Um, and well, the shape of the, uh, of the, the piece of wood that I had pretty much dictated what the bowl was going to look like. So um, it doesn't show very well on video, but the grain is really nice. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Here in, 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 in this part. And um, I see that it's starting to crack here. Mm. So I think I have to do something about that. Um, yeah, I, well, I already dabbled a bit with, uh, with bowls uh, before, like, this tiny, nice. tiny one. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Matt, that I didn't follow the, uh, uh, the shape of the bowl. Oh, I love it. I love experimenting like that. Yeah. Turn lashes with a wet noodle. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and I had some, uh, some wood left from the same piece of wood. So I made a little spoon out of it with the same grain. So except it's here, here it has a bit of grain. And actually, now that I speak to you all, um, there's like white in here, this part, and this yeah. is browner, brownish, and then this part is dark brown. Actually, I want to bleach the white so that I have more um, uh, color contrast. difference, contrast. Yeah. Anybody, any idea how I should do that? I, can you do that? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I was hoping that the hive mind would give me a good answer, but I, I, every time I've seen, suck. <laughs> yeah, when when they do that commercially, what they do is they steam the wood, turns the sap wood dark, so that they can get more out of a board foot. Right, but they, they he wants to go the food. other way. Yeah. What? I don't he wants want to, to go the other way. He wants to take that white wood and not make it dark, but make it even whiter. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was thinking just putting it in in in, in vinegar. Why mm. would be more your go the other way towards not acid but base, and they use that when they lime oak to make it white. Ah, okay. And so it's okay. a it's and you can get it. It's a lime paste. It's for bleaching wood it's a it's a it's a alkaline based product interesting all right also also, also kind of dangerous so you know you have to be careful well and i'm that's I'm, bleach, I'm, that's bleach officer. I'm uh, not officially but unofficially i'm the safety officer here so i won't tell no. <laughs> oh so, yeah that's uh, that's 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 it so, yeah, excellent job, Andreas. Well done. I loved, I love that you did a spoon to go along with it from the same wood. That was a great idea. I love it. That's gorgeous. Very nice. Yeah, it's getting there. Yeah, well done. Oh. All right. I like it. So. All right. Who would like to go next? All right, Jody. Good morning. Good morning. So I might as well show you because it's not going to be done by the time <laughs> the meeting gets done. <laughs> yeah, but we're not finished. Um, it's from a piece of cherry. I'm still nice. working on getting it a little bit thinner, I think, all the way around. Um, yeah. But it has some um, like a rim of the sapwood here yep. and then the heartwood. It's Beautiful. Um, I've been having a, I did a little bit of um, a kind of fancy foot on the bottom. And oh, very nice. It's been taking me forever because I, I kind of did it quickly. I should have really finished the bottom first and then added the gouge texture to the top of that. But since I didn't, 
since I kind of did the gouge first, now I'm having to go back and finish all the way like around the edge, but I think that it's, I think it's a nice contrast. Um, yeah, it's really nice. I love I'm wondering it. about the top, if I should keep the, the top totally flat like this, like the rim, or if I should angle it a little bit, does anyone have any thoughts about I was actually kind of toying with that with mine too. I kind of like the, um, like I, I like the idea of it, of it having a bit of that sort of a, a shallow saddle swoop to it. Um, I just think it would lend itself to the, the shape. So I mean, I think so too. But I'm more talking about like the actual top part. Of oh, it. is it standard just to leave it flat or? to put a small like chamfer yeah. on that. I edge. chamfer both sides, like on the outside and the inside. Okay, yeah, but, cause something about it to me just looks like a little bit unfinished. So that might be the answer. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, like I the, with... uh, the bottom, it looks like, um, um, you know, like the, it, would it be possible to make the uh, top rim the same as the bottom? I was wondering about that too, to kind of bring it. Kind of difficult though. I mean. Maybe just a little tiny scallop around the outside, around the edge here. Yeah, well that's like what I did with mine. I tried to scallop that outside edge. I didn't chamfer the inside and I was debating whether to do that or not. But I was also thinking with yours, if you wanted to, like where I just sca uh, sh scalloped the edge, I wonder yeah. if you could actually scallop the whole surface, like the whole flat surface all the way around, or is that too much? Are you not looking for? Well, it might be hard going in and out of the green. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, it definitely is. Even doing just the edge, it was tough. Let's, like I said, coming down the sides where you're parallel to the grain, yeah. that's where it gets tricky. Going across the grain or, or diagonally, you were fine. But as soon as you got up to about there on the edge, between like there, and there, that whole side, it was just like a constant. You had to come back and forth to try and get it to meet cleanly. So hopefully it doesn't crack. Um, I see some very, very fine um, little tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny cracks. Yeah. Just, they almost look like scratches. So I don't know if something like that will close back up or get worse. How wet, how wet was the, the wood when you started? Was it like really fresh or has it been stewing yeah, for a while? Pretty fresh. It's a log yeah. that got down like a couple months ago. But. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's funny, like some, sometimes cracks appear and then they just disappear. Like, I, and I think, oh my God, it's gonna be a huge problem. And then it just goes away. Uh, even, like even without me cutting underneath it. So I, I don't know, it's a hard, you just don't know. You just gotta wait and see. I try to dry it real slowly. Yeah, that looks beautiful. Great but job. I love the. I have to done that. Cool. So. Sorry, what was that? I said it was a fun challenge, and I have never made a bowl, yeah. so that part was fun. Thanks, man. Very nice. I like the I like the foot that you did. I I've been watching a lot of uh, the what is it the. Uh, uh, what's the name of that show? It's a, the Throwdown or whatever, the the pottery one. Oh, yeah. And and they're, they're, I just watched an episode where they were doing uh, like a Japanese sake set, and uh, one of them did like like these nice turned, you know, feet, you know. And I just I love that you kind of brought that in and, yeah, and put a foot on there on a carved bowl. It's a really cool yeah. idea. Yeah. Anyway. Thanks. Very, very nice. I'm excited to finish it. Sometimes I get like frustrated and I don't want to continue, but I think when I um when I start working on it again, then it's yep. it's be fun to finish. Awesome. Great job, Jody. Thank you. All right. Who would like to go next? Wave a hand. All right, Suze, you're up. Hi. <laughs> Hello. So this was my first one. Um, I actually started that like right before uh, Matt announced the new challenge. So <laughs> that was, <laughs> I was lucky. <laughs> you anticipated it. Great job. Exactly. So that's, that's also why it's round and like 
yeah, it's very shallow and out the outside is deeper than the inside. And yeah, <laughs> but it has some funny grain, some nice grain. It almost looks like a scallop shell, the way you've got the, the grain oriented in it. It's kind of neat. Yeah, and it, that it just stops here, this black uh, part. Yeah. It's just, I don't know what happened there, but it looks fun. <laughs> yeah, I like it. <laughs> and then I have the, the plow. The plow, the plow. The, the plow. the plow between a plate and a bowl because, yeah, I only have three centimeter wood yeah. to work with. So, yeah. But at least it's oval and it's knife finished and it has this very like shimmery now, facets. What kind of I wood actually, is that, Zeus? What kind of wood? Lime, is that? basswood. Bass? Yeah. Linden holds lime, basswood. It's, yeah. Totally funny. <laughs> those, those straight lines are just really cool. Mm -hmm. I was yeah, gonna was ask batch. on that one. Like, did you like for your your initial shaping of it? Was this all done just with gouges or? Yes, I have like this really big file chisel. Okay. Uh, which yeah, is a bit, on the floor multiple times, but it was a bit rounded, and I only used that actually. Because I've actually been wanting to do like like shallow plate type uh, things like that. I was actually yeah. wanting to do one in sort of a almost like a like a old, like a rounded corner uh, um, square type of a shape. Mm -hmm. um, and but I was trying to think about how it would be the best way to go about trying to to you know hollow that cleanly and then yeah. on the back sides like bringing them you know bringing it up. So how did you do your work holding on this while you were doing your gouge work? Um, I just clamped it down with a, a what are these things called in English that the, where you push the bottom up and you screw it tight. Clamp. You clamped it with a clamp. Clamp, yeah. Oh, yeah just, a, just a regular old clamp. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. just a regular clamp on the table okay. and tried to, yeah, not um break it or anything and when i turned yeah. it around I, I i worked as far as i could get and then i put something inside and clamped it in the middle yeah. so it wouldn't break down yeah. I, believe yeah. called, I believe they're called an f style clamp ah that would make sense yeah and then this morning i made this one finish this one nice so I don't know if you know him, um, Etienne Bayoy, I probably murdered that. Um, he makes these wonderful bowls with this, um, this type of texture, but like much nicer. And I always wanted to try and do something like him. Mm. And so this, yeah, was the perfect opportunity. <laughs> it's very far from the template, I admit. And then I saw Rachel's wonderful hexagonal. Uh, right balls and yep. I had just had to make one too but I think it's a bit too much it's too much going on with the uh, facets here so yeah no, hers I don't are, know. I kind of like it oh okay hers are clean and they the 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 shape comes out much better I find but yep. yeah as you can see I made four things and <laughs> even wow. though I didn't very much follow the template it was so much fun <laughs> Yeah, you did yeah. a great job. Excellent. Enjoyed Very creative. As Thank you. always. Have you seen my t-shirt? <laughs> Eat, sleep, wood, wood carving. carving. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's my life. <laughs> and and you're living it quite well. <laughs> well. <laughs> Very nice. Always Doctor, creative. If, if you do end up doing like platters and, and plates, the thing I found, the grain really starts to matter. Like if you keep with a radial blank, it'll stay flat. Otherwise okay. your plate becomes a bowl. Yeah, uh, it starts, yeah, warping. I, I, I've learned well, the hard way. Fun. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I mean, I could... Yeah, cool. All right, who would like to go next? Who has not yet had a turn? I see Florian out there. I see Kaylin. Kaylin, you're up. Awesome. Thanks, Chuck. Um, 
So I had a lot of fun with this template, but I did not get nearly as many done as I want. In my fridge, I've got a bunch of chunks of wood that are all going to be medium bowls, but I feel like I've been distracted with um, my day job. You know, it gets in the way wood carving all the time. <laughs> They're so annoying, aren't they? It's so annoying. Um, <laughs> but I got two finished. Um, and so the first one, uh, when I actually first joined Rise Up, and started carving um, spoons, the first thing I bought of woodenware was actually one of Matt's dessert bowls, which is the medium size. And so I've been eating desserts all year and just love the shape and form. And I was really excited for this template. So thank you, Matt, for that. Um, so my first one that I did was a medium sized bowl from the template. And it's a really pretty spalted birch. Um, and I caught it right at the, the level of spalting where it's got some pretty lines and color, but yeah. there was no punkiness. So it's still like a very rigid birch. And then this one, I wanted to do kind of some nice texturing and lines. <laughs> and it's a good story of like, if you're hungry and you're carving, go eat dinner because you're going to rush things. And so... <laughs> I tried to make straight and clean lines, but then they ended up getting wibbly, but they weren't quite wibbly enough to be like organic. And so the, the outside is textured, but I'm, it looks pretty, but in person, I wish it would be either like really nice straight flutes or they would be kind of a little bit more funky. I feel like they're in an odd in-between stage for the flutings and then these I used a, a probably too aggressive gouge. And so they ended up getting a bit deeper in the channels than I would have liked. So I think that was just a good lesson on what does light texturing look like versus kind of a heavy textured bowl. Mm. So this one, I still very proud of it. Um, I, I did say wibbly, that's, that's my new slow term that I use often. <laughs> John called me out in the chat. Can you define Wibbly for us better? <laughs> yeah, so Wibbly is a combination of wiggling and wobbling. So it's Wibbly. Wibbly is a term that I use often. <laughs> Not to be confused with Weebly. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> so I feel like the lines just wibble around. That, um, that's like, actually, I, I was going to mention that. Like, one of the nice things about doing, like, more random patterns right if you're trying if you're doing something that looks like it's supposed to be yeah like geometric then you're stuck in that if it's not perfect it's wibbly exactly <laughs> whereas exactly. if it's if it's an actual pattern and it's got you know mm -hmm. or as you called it organic flow to it then it, it hides a multitude of sins so yeah. yeah yeah i think until i get a little bit better gouge control yeah. I'm going to do some more organic ones because I, I really like when you've got fine fluted channels and they look good. Like, I think that's very impressive, yeah. but it's, it's quite difficult to do. And so the second bowl I did is a little bit smaller than the small template just because it was a piece of wood that I had. Mm. Um, but this is an apple wood. And it's um, I have a lot of apple that has a heartwood sapwood split, and this is just sapwood. And it has a little bit of spalting and discoloration on it, um, beautifully smooth. And then the outside, I ended up, I ended up doing this one just with um, a tuka cam and a sloyd knife. So I wanted to not use my bowl carving tools because I do have adzes and things like that. So this one I carved just with a tuka cam and a sloyd knife. And so the outside is sloyd knife facets. Yep. And then this one I did milk paint into a really pretty plum color. Um, so I'm pretty excited about how this one turned out. That's my second matte bowl. And then the one that I started and have not even gotten close to finishing is um, when this uh, challenge started, uh, Danielle's book came out as well and she's a bowl carver. And so I, I tried to make a slightly bigger one for a salad bowl size with Matt's shape as the inside and then using Danielle's kind of shape mm. some handles for the outside. And so this one is roughed out. And this again is that spalted birch. So it's got some really pretty, pretty spalting in here. Um, 
but it's not even close to finished. So this will be like a small salad bowl for a couple of people. Nice. Kaylin, Kaylin, can you just show the book, please? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna book. have it. Um, I've got it right here also. Yeah, it's actually out in my shop, so I don't have I it. I got it. The hand carved bowl, and it's phenomenal. Um, I took a virtual course from Dave Fisher this year, which was great, and it's a two-part course with Elia. But this book mm. is like anything you want to know about carving and keeping your body strong and her no spoilers yeah no spoilers. it's good yeah it's, 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 it's promoting <laughs> it's it's quite extensive i mean yeah. it goes everything through i mean basically i mean it covers everything from you know harvesting and selecting wood through sharpening tools through which tools you know you need to do this type of work to work holding mm -hmm. uh self-care you know, so that, because I mean, it is, it, if you're, especially if you're carving, carving larger bowls, you know, and you're swinging adzes and axes a lot, there, there's a lot going on, a lot of stress on the body. Um, so that, and then through bowl forms and finishing, uh, there's a lot in this book. It's, it's really well done. Yeah. She it's was a my uh, original teacher. So uh, have yeah. her to thank for all of it. She's amazing. Yeah. Excellent. So Thanks, Matt, for the bowl inspiration and the challenge. It's it's yeah. a lot of fun. And I'm excited to actually carve the ones that are in my fridge someday. someday. It's fantastic. Yeah, you did a great job, Kalen. Well done, you. All right. Who has not had a chance to go yet that is waiting to go? Wave a hand if you've got something to show. All right, Brad. Well, good morning, all. I'm just joining you because we had no power. <laughs> oh, was that so I missed the whole thing. I'm, I'll watch the recording. Uh, let's see. So let's start out with the idea that I'm a I'm a bowl turner. I've made many hundreds, probably a few thousand bowls. So that the concept of bowls is um, not new to me. But um, I don't really have carving tools for doing them. So I have this giant Ashley Isles number seventeen. 31 millimeter gigantic thing that I got inspired by photos of Dave Fisher's work and some of the some of the videos I've seen and then realized that it's way harder than he makes it look. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> so the only tool I have that's kind of appropriate is this number 612. Uh, it's not a fail, but it's a maybe a fake fail. Um, so this goes through the wood very nicely, and at least um, you know I could give it a try. So for this challenge, my my first attempt was like Chuck. I started with a piece of walnut that was that was too dry, and so it was difficult. And I gave up on this in part because it was too steep and too deep, and without a curved gouge, mm. you just can't go around the curves. And so I I, I abandoned that one, um, and I I got a. Um, and then, so for this challenge on Tuesday, I started, um, I took a plank of um, freshly cut white birch and made um, two depressions in it together, one oval, one kind of round. So the roundish one um, I made with little wings on the end grain, and then I textured the outside Beautiful. Um, with, with this little gouge. And I tried to go for some kind of geometric pattern and I wish I had done more of this, where you go one way and then the other way. You know. Yeah, like a herringbone kind of thing. It, nice. It did that on the four corners, so. Um, I like it. It's kind of you know, it's something to explore, something to have fun with. Yeah. And then the ovalish, the ovalish one, I made oval and then um, decided I wanted to make little funky wings on it, so I think I made a little Woodstock bird. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that with the eye. That's brilliant. <laughs> Uh, and this one I just did wiggly. What's the word, Kayla? Wibbly. <laughs> Wibbly. <laughs> Wibbling things. No, I did, these are just like wonky, wormy shapes going in every which way because I didn't want it to be smooth. And, um, you know, so this is fun. And I appreciate Matt pushing us in a direction I probably wouldn't have gone. I had started, I did make a, a, about five or six years ago before I heard of Ruag. I mean, I had made a couple natural edge bowls. So I did make this one, but I found that I had no, no proper tools. So it's very, very limiting in the shapes and in the slopes. And I gotta get a, 
a couple of curved gouges to go much further. Mm. That's a beautiful that. bowl. So um, this is, I think, the one that I got some, you know, I got inspired to take this big walnut log and make something that was like 18 inches by 28 inches. I was like, yeah. you know, I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, and I, and I'm, I'm not brave. Like, Kaylin is, uh, I'm not very brave. I don't have milk paint. I've never used it. So I don't, I'm not very brave about coloring things. So I need to, you know, get past that evolutionary step and, mm. you know, be willing to like, screw it up and start with birch that that was my like gateway wood to milk paint is birch is just very simple and it can mm. be a little boring so after you've done a dozen birch items you're ready for milk paint i still have not painted anything that's fantastic but um it is a lot of fun <laughs> yeah what was that color my... on yours uh plum oh plum yeah. And is that real milk paint company? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Really nice. So one of my mentors in the wood turning world is a guy, a Canadian guy named Mike Hosseluk. And um, his work is pretty phenomenal. He's, he's a real, an artist that uses a lathe. So he's not really a wood turner that does arty things. Um, and one of the things he will do is take texture like this and then he'll paint it. And then he'll take like a spoke shave or something and shave away, you know, he'll paint it with two or three different layers and then take mm. sharp objects and cut through so that you reveal different layers of color on the high spots and low spots. And that's something I would like to do. I think that's, that's kind of a direction off. Yeah, I think it's uh, UK carver, Dave Cockcroft does, has done a lot of that with cups where he'll have, uh, yeah. you know, like the, the carved, uh, you know, facets on the cup and then he'll paint like a red layer underneath and then a black layer on top of that. And then he'll uh, rub hard or pull, like it pulls away the, the black on the high points of the facets. And I think he calls them like his lava cups or something like that. Cause it looks like, you know, molten lava coming up through cracked, you know, rock. It's really cool look. There's somebody doing that with shrink pots just about every day. And I think it's yeah, yeah. very nice. Yeah, it's become, it's become pretty widely used as a technique. It's really neat. It kind of reminds me of, too, like what we used to do as kids. Remember where you'd take and you'd color with all different color crayons <laughs> on a piece of paper, and then you'd cover it with black crayon, and then you'd use like a sharp awl to scratch through it, and you'd get all these wild colorations. It's really neat. Cool stuff. All right. Let me uh, jump back into the gallery, and... Who has not had a chance to go yet? All right, George, you're up. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, just a moment. I have to. Yeah, here's my picture. So I made this um, ball with uh, it's quite nice marble with mm. this green spalting. I found this one log off, and I ruined it. Oh no! <laughs> So um, I, I, I thought I was really prepared for this. I carved this bowl like two weeks ago. It was dry. I wanted to do a few finish cuts before the session. So I will try to make a walnut inlay and try to save it. But right now I'm pretty much disappointed. Oh, so um, John and Patrice gave me the idea of carving a small bowl. So nice. I quickly did that to have at least something which is like finished. There you go. So I did this in the last, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Joan and Patrice for the, the inspiration. Great That's job. all I've got. We have our 21.1s. One look at nice side and one really screwed up side. Oh, that, that's such a shame. Yeah. <laughs> what a bummer because it's a beautiful yeah. bowl. You did a great job with it. I'm really, All right. I'm really disappointed that, that I ruined one of my best pieces of wood lightly, but yeah. whatever. That's really cool the way it gets that green spalting on there like that. I've not seen that in any of the maple that I've had. I, I had a maple before where there was like one green string or maybe two, mm. but not like, like these, like that all the 
it, it was well, it were, it, um, these were the um, tubes or whatever uh, close to the bark. So mm. that's why you get in the spoon this little, this nice variation of, uh, yeah, that the, the, it's fading out. Like here you have a lot of green thingies and, and to, toward the middle, it's fading out. So you can play around with this quite nicely. Mm. So here's a lot and toward the middle, it's fading out. This side is more. Really cool. Like that. How about, but how about how would left? What? what was that, Andreas? Well, making more mistakes, like making more of these holes in the in the bowl. That's true, actually. You know, George, you could like alternate the holes and the solids and make it like a fruit bowl. You know, it doesn't have to be holding liquid. A wooden yeah. strainer. I've never seen a wooden strainer bowl. <laughs> It'd be like a colander for like rinsing potatoes or something. Yeah. First, I have to to find my piece with this piece of wood. That's true. I, I that. like that idea. That's a great idea, Andreas. It's I not have a mistake. My... It's a feature, George. You charge extra it's for those. It's a, it's a pierced carving. You charge it's extra a, for a, that. I have a it's, smart, a, it's a bummer, and I'm still really. <laughs> I'm really. I, I, it's a bummer, and I'm still really not family friendly. Move. <laughs> you can't consider. You can't. Cons uh, you can't consider new options while the wound is fresh. Yeah, put it put it aside for a month and then come to it. You need a you need a mourning period. <laughs> you might have the All world's right. prettiest lattice bowl. All right, is there anybody else who is not yet yeah, shown? This one. Is there is there anybody else who's not yet had a chance to show their work? All right, then I will go. I've kind of already showed it a little bit. That's my black walnut bowl. Um, this was a lot of fun, Matt. Thank you very much for finally, uh, with this challenge, getting me the push to dive down. Into, I've been wanting to do bowls for a long time, and I really, um, really enjoyed it. I, I like the template a lot. It's a beautiful form, um, and there's a lot of things to play with, 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 with a seemingly simple form, you know? So like even just like when I was trying to do my sides, like I, I ended up deciding to try and keep them pretty, pretty, you know, evenly straight all the way around. And I didn't go for any texturing on the outside um, or the inside, you know, for that matter. Um, and I tried just about every tool that I have doing this. Uh, I, I've literally used like swan net. I, well, I started off with, with the drill, right? And the drill bit to, to do that. I used my large file gouges to knock out and hog out a lot of the wood. Um, I used my swan neck gouges, which were actually a little too wide for this size of form. So I found myself having trouble because I constantly, like, because it's hard and I was putting so much force behind it, it would suddenly go through and then ding into the opposite side. So I ended up actually doing most of this and finishing it off just with handheld hook knives. Um, I tried my Twickercam, you know, same sorts of uh, issues and, and all of that. So I ended up doing it mostly knife finished on the outside and handheld hook finished on the inside. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it and I will definitely enjoy it more in Greenwood. Um, but but the oh, nice thing about dry wood. Just, just quickly. Um, yeah. uh, here I used this uh, um, this uh, I don't know how to call this thing, this clamping thing. It worked quite well for the bowl finish. So I, 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 I was showing that on the um, uh, on my demo. So um, you just put your leg in it, and you can clamp down on the bowl, and it's really easy to turn and to fix. So oh, it's yeah. maybe uh, another opportunity to to clamp down a bowl while finishing the outside. Yeah, I actually went, I, I did the whole thing where I got the pony clamps 
um, like you had, Matt, and, and did that setup, and it works great. But the only problem that I have is on my workmate, like where I wanted to try and do a lot of this work on the outside, I was hoping I could get at it a lot with a draw knife. I actually still didn't have enough clearance, partially because it's a small form, and by the time I got to that, I had already separated it off from the other section. Um, and so I, I just didn't have the clearance to get at it with a draw knife. But um, so in some ways, I almost think, even though there's a lot more physical work involved, it's, it's almost easier in some ways working on larger forms, I would think, just because you have more options, it seems to, to work it and have more clearance. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe that... There's a mid-size somewhere. The tiny ones are great because you can do them in hand. You know, you right. kind of take them like a spoon. My setup, the medium, I can get my draw knife, but I'm sure it's, you know, it's just so. So it must be, yeah. you know, I'm an inch closer to the edge of my bench or something like that. But yeah. yeah. And then uh, the dinner size ones I do are probably the, the sweet spot. Easiest to hold, but not a serving bowl. Right. Yep. So and, yeah, uh, so this was a lot of fun. And then the other thing that I really enjoyed was playing around, like starting to try and figure out like how to like hollow out that bottom and what kind of a shape. And it's actually not really perfectly flat. I tried to flatten it. Uh, I didn't have a, I didn't have my plane or anything sharpened up. So I didn't go at it initially to flatten it well. So I just tried to hand hew with my ax to get everything square and flat on the blank before I started. And so it doesn't really sit perfectly flat. So I was very close to actually cheating and, and taking it and just holding it down on my belt sander to flatten off the bottom. But I ended up just leaving, trying to flatten it off with a knife. And uh, it's, it's, it's a little wibbly or wobbly in this case. Um, but uh, yeah, so, but yeah, this was a lot of fun and I really had a lot of fun with that scallop, uh, scalloping on the edge. Uh, I still have to kind of chamfer, I guess, that inside edge. I was debating whether to do that or not. But um, well, uh, Chuck's frozen. Yeah. As Chuck freezes, I will say thanks, everyone. This was a ton of fun to see uh, all the different takes and, and everything like that. So uh, really appreciate all the support, all the great ideas and, and, and engagement. Thank you, Matt. Really appreciate the time you put into this. Yeah. Well, apparently Thanks, my Matt. internet keeps freezing, so sorry about that, folks. Don't worry. I did Thank a wonderful wrap-up, Chuck. It, it was inspiring. You'll see it on the awesome. recording. <laughs> Matt, those, Matt, those sentiments you just expressed, I don't know how you did it, the way you put that thought into words. That was amazing. <laughs> the, the bad thing, though, is I, I think because I'm the one that's recording this, I think every time I freeze, it like nothing's gonna come through on that recording for that period. Oh, that means no one will get to hear Matt's genius wrap up. Oh God. Exactly. A loss, a loss to the spoon world. Never to be repeated again. Indeed. Care, everyone. Oh, I'm so All glad right. I was here. Um, Thanks, Matt. Another. Another frozen. Uh, I have another no. tip for getting the, the bottom straight. Sorry. Oh, okay, go ahead. Go ahead, George. Uh, you can um, put some, um, you can scrap some um, pencil on the paper and that's just wrap the bowl above it. And all, every part which is sticking out will catch some pencil and you can carve away that. Or you I just can. take a, a piece of sandpaper and slide it over it. And so you see the sticking out parts and you carve away that. I've noticed when you carve the bottom of the bowl and you've made a clean cut and your wood is really fresh and clean, you can rub it on almost anything. You can rub it on your kitchen counter, on your, on your, on your, sh oh, yeah, yeah. on your, sh on your sh shop floor. You can run it on your workbench, anything, and you'll be able to see where it rubbed and where it di didn't and yeah. just carve away where it rubbed. And that's worked really well for me. Interesting. Great ideas. All right. So, um, I, I know Matt had to go, but we didn't get a chance yet to look through the pictures that are up on Instagram. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we can quickly walk through those. I gotta go, people. All right, Andreas, great job. Good seeing you. Bye. All righty.
So these were Matt's bowls, I think, that he had posted initially to, to start us off. Um, let me start walking up through this. Yep. Tiny bowls. There's just the announcement and the demo announcement. That was a beaut. That's a he did a beautiful job on that. That particular bowl is spectacular. And the recording. Okay, here we go. Chris D. So a process shot. Don't hate hate when that happens. Mm. Bummer. Orin. <laughs> this fluffy fluffy bud Friday. <laughs> Too funny. I love these photos. Is that a ferret? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. So cute. <laughs> Chuck, if you don't know that this is a ferret, you haven't been on Rise Up for a long time. I haven't been on for a while, but. A trinket bowl. I like that. Mm -hmm. This was the bowl that gave me the idea of doing a really tiny bowl. Yeah. Really nice. That's right, John Couples, where was he today? Bowl full of chips. Jeff Fry it. Wow, beautiful spoon. Cute bowl. Yeah, I kind of like that saddle. There we go. Nice. I love the plow. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, feel free to unmute yourselves and comment if you would like. Suze, did you have to bake it or is that the natural color? Um, that was actually the natural color. I didn't do anything to it. It's beautiful. Really? Nice. Yeah. Our lime is, what I think of as lime is much paler than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our basswood is definitely much paler than that. Yeah, you, usually our our lime is, is paler as well. So I think um, you got a got a really nice. Did the oil maybe darken yeah. it, Suze? Yeah, it's very very yellow, very almost orange linseed oil, very high quality linseed oil, and I I drenched it in it. So yeah, <laughs> that gives it that translucence too. That's neat. Mm. Very cool. Nice. Love that texturing. Sorry, Chuck, for interrupting you earlier. Oh, it's okay. Whoops. Where were we? Here. And Ron. Oh. Where's the bowl? There's the bowl. We've got it's his in progress shots, I guess. Nice. Uh, where am I here? Nope, wrong way. This one. Love this. Mm -hmm. Rachel was like just kick hitting it out of the park with the these really, really nice forms. I claimed that one. That one's coming to me. Nice. Did you really? 
Yeah, when she was showing it on Rise Up, I was immediately like, can I have the first one, the one that's salt on it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I think it's a really great innovative idea because we have like a salt, we have like a salt caddy that we carry all over the the kitchen. So the idea that this could be like a portable salt caddy and I thought her extending the one yep. end of the hexagon into the handle, mm -hmm. I just really was impressed with the kind of cleverness of th like three yep. or four. And then I agree, I think this one was the best. Yeah. Yeah, as Couple soon as I saw it, it, it resonated with me because of the, the the spoon that I did with the, the hexagonal spoon bowl for the, uh, the Rebel Challenge. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me a lot of that, but I loved how she extended that and then used that as the space to carve the lettering. Just brilliant. It was, yeah. I really she's she's so good. Really gorgeous. That's so cool that you got a hold of it. So that was my ready. setup that I was talking about I that I on the way to me. Created. Those clamps are surprisingly inexpensive. They're like 18 bucks on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Or the screws. They're not clamps, they're screws. But I did have to go and then buy these big washers to put underneath it. Um because otherwise, if, if you try to have it sit flush with the wood, the um, the bulge of these little wings they don't uh, turn. Yeah. Will, coll will collide with the wood top. So you have to have these nice big thick washers underneath to raise it above the level of the wood. Yeah, you can do, do it a little bit, but it, it like scars into the wood. It like, you know. That's how they get you. Yeah. How do they? How, how do you pronounce them? How, how do you, can you put them in the chat or something like that? These uh, yeah, they're called a veneer press. Um, here, let me go to the chat. Hold on. Nope, wrong chat. Where's the session chat? I lost my session chat. I'll do it once I'm stopped sharing my screen. But they're they're pony p o n y veneer clamp or veneer press. Spoons by the sea. That's a really nice shot. There's an on Andreas's in process in progress shots. This was nice the way he was doing this too, with um, his uh, axing on this mulberry. Why didn't the video play? There we go. That is cool. I would be terrified as I'm coming along the side, though, of a miss hit coming straight down into that grain and just splitting the whole side off. Like right there, that last shot, I'm just like, ooh. There's John Couples Sycamore Bowl. Beautiful. Love that. Nice job on that, really great. I love this too, where he did the straight sides, oh. as, as, but kept the inner oval. Oops. There's actually an image there. Hmm, that's weird. There's Ron. Nice. Come on. My, is my internet, am I stalled again? Am I frozen? 
No, I hear you. No. I'm wondering why I'm not getting all these images coming up. My internet connection is really crappy for whatever reason right now. Nice job, Kamal. Kamal was a potter before he was a wood carver. Ah, so he's got that eye for, for form, for bowls especially. Craig, Craig did a much better job with his fluting. And then look at those tiny chips between yeah. each fruit as a detail. Yeah. I think his bowl, it's just so sweet and nice. Like he did a fantastic job on it. Yeah, he really did. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I love his drawing department. <laughs> <laughs> that is gorgeous. Yeah, he is so good. All right, come on. Ah. I, I love this executive director of Woodchip Relocation. <laughs> so funny. Ryan's hilarious, man. Wood Chicago. I don't know Wood Chicago. That's Ryan, isn't it? No, no. Ryan is Fireside. Fireside. Oh, you're right. Oh, then who? You're right. Who is this? Logan. Logan Bierman. Wow. I don't know who that is. Um, I think he was a few times on Rise Up, but not really regular. OK. Nice. Ryan, to me, is anybody... Ryan has a very Chicago sounding accent to my ears, Chuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does anybody know who this person, Nancy Jenner? Nancy Jenner, I thought that was Spoons by the Sea. Yeah, yeah, Nancy's yeah. done a lot in the afternoon. She's also a painter that paints these oceanscapes that are crazy. Where is she from? She's pretty much always joining. She has a, a house by the sea in some fancy place he's somewhere and on the, um, somewhere on the he's East always Coast. joining the Seattle School Club. He has a place on Cape Cod. Oh. Yeah, right. Nice. Andreas with his spoon and bowl. Very nice. Rachel, that is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. The next bowl I do, I'm gonna to try to burn like a lot, a lot more yeah. like that. I, I really like. I do all too. All that dark. See, but here's the thing for me, right? Like I see this grain in here, and I get so enamored of just the natural grain of the wood that, like, sort of like you, Kaylin, like unless it's really like boring birch, mm -hmm. I just kind of it's like I almost don't want to do anything to it. Because I feel like anything I'm going to do is going to detract. And yet, when I see other people do it on, even with beautifully figured wood, it's so, I don't know. Is there just anything Rachel doesn't do well? <laughs> <laughs> really, really impressive. Nice job, Nancy. Ooh. Painted. That one came out really nice. Mm -hmm like that color. Yeah, that's nice. Chunky cuts. Yep, I love that. <laughs> Very cool. Look at that. It's really scalloped. Look at that. Wow. That's ah, just me with my while I was still trying to smooth it off and hollow it out. Oh, that's Jurgen. Got it. Aha. Don't. What happened? I accidentally clicked out. 
There we were. I love that shape. That's that's really he did a great job with this. So that's again different style of pattern, but that scorching on top really does make it jump out. Really cool. Beautiful. Look at oh, that. Nice. Mm -hmm. Wow. I love how deep that is. That's really right? cool. Yeah. It's like dedication and like a double bowl of cereal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love how deep the gouge work, the, the, the texturing is. Mm -hmm. Did you scorch some of it, John? Yeah, I did. I just lightly did. I tried not to overdo it because I was afraid I, I would overdo it. Mm -hmm. But I could have done a little bit more, I think. <clears throat> those first cuts with the gouge are so nerve wracking. Like you don't know if it's going to tear out or if it's going to, you're going to do long, long, too long. Yeah. That, that first five minutes on there was just terrifying. Did you do those just hand pushed or were you uh, using a mallet? All hand pushed. Okay. Clamp down really tight and with a really sharp, yep. small chisel. Nice. That looks great. I don't know. I kind of like the the just bit of random scorch mark. Yeah. It's it kind of makes it. The randomness is, is that randomness is tough. Like, do I put a little bit more, or my does it just look like I'm just right? Like the like next one, I really want to. Next one, I really right. want to emphasize the burning and just just burn the whole thing because that that's so pretty. Why did you make it, it out of apple? That's apple. Yeah. With really nice heartwood and yeah. sapwood combination. I, I got lucky on that piece. I really like it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Really nice. All right. That's just the reminder. Those are beautiful. Really pretty. Uh, it's just my shots of my bowl. A little bit of spalting going on there too. And there was this one area where I have in one side there was like a bit of a knot, which was a bit of a pain in the butt because I keep getting kept getting tear out on both sides of it as I try to yeah. carve it from the inside. Yeah, and I've got a couple of those in mind too. It's a pain. Just yeah. keep tearing out. Yeah, and on the outside as well. I've still got some rough spots I can see. Anyway. Wow. That was like a big one. Looks intimidating. I was going to say. <laughs> Dried black walnut. Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. Maybe a hammer involved with that. Yeah. It's going to get to a point where I'm going to want to use one of those reciprocating gouges as opposed to a hand gouge. <laughs> really nice. Wow. Really impressive. Love that. <laughs> he just finds those stones randomly. That's so amazing. Yeah, the burnishers are beautiful, Patrice. Yeah, they are. they are. Not all of them. Not the, the little like faux gemstone ones, but like the black one. Yes. <laughs> really love that pattern. Beautiful job. The paintwork on there is just gorgeous. That paintwork makes it look so 3D, those hexagons. It's right? really cool. impressive. This is one of my paintings that's not on the wall, so I do grab it. I don't know if you could see me in the... Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
so I usually paint hexagons on wood with other things, but yeah, it's kind of the same. Um, so this is me being lazy and not coming up with another design and just kind of going off of what I usually do. And so that made it, it much easier to decide like what I want to do with that little bowl. <laughs> gotcha. Well, it works beautifully. Yeah. So nice. Inspired idea. I love the idea of hanging it up like on the yeah. wall next to me and then getting it down for like a little snack and then putting it back. <laughs> nice. You couldn't fit a skull in there somewhere, huh? <laughs> I thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to be too one note. <laughs> love oh, the you mean my uh, photos. <laughs> I love your misfits of Sloyd. Uh... Yeah, it's a good one. Mommy, can I go out and carve tonight? <laughs> <laughs> and Kaylin's little rise up and carve patch right there. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Stay sharp, <laughs> stay positive. Love it. Who's this? They may know who this is. Mm -mm. No. Ah, that's um, the lady from, from Chile. Oh. oh, okay. The size of that gouge. Geez. I was going to say, wow. That's wild. <laughs> that, that's for making dugout canoes. Yeah. And I don't know um, if she's she's still on but she was she was taking part in the in the session so i'm gonna show show and tell oh nice oh she was signed on here yeah i don't know um if she's still on very nice beautiful Mr. Couples again. Am I into, ah, there we go. Nice, Suze. I really like this one. Yeah, it's so cool. Like I would never have thought to keep it like a hard edge like that and very, uh, with, let alone all the texturing all the way on it. That's really cool. I like that the so inside funny. texturing is tiered. Like it's like, you can see the lines of the gouge marks down. It looks really cool. Yeah. Really I neat. Know. No uh, makers, Mark. You people are all yes. so creative. What was that? <laughs> she needs to put her makers, Mark, on. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That is beautiful wood, Poggy. Yeah. That is crazy. The grain's gorgeous. That's Looks definitely like, yeah, got to go eight, into the I'm next cage grain challenge. Yeah. Even though I heard that Michael from Seattle yeah. already won it. Michael's post from yesterday blew my mind. It's the perfect cage grain challenge post. Really? Oh, I've got, <laughs> I haven't seen it. If, I got to go. If you haven't it. seen Michael's post, it's amazing. If I made a fake account and tried to post the perfect cage grain challenge entrance that would it wouldn't be as good as michael's from yesterday it was so good yeah i was online when Kevin <laughs> was reading it and it was phenomenal Galen yeah, was online with me while i was reading and i was like swearing i was so angry i was like jeez i was so mad what's, was his, so good. what's his instagram handle wooden spoon fool oh yeah these are the uh, big leaf maple burl ones unbelievable but not the the objects are amazing. Like I've not ever seen grain like that in a carved object, but the the way the post hit all the tones of the KH grain challenge was just incredible. Holy crap. He, he he even deterred he even deterred people from entering in a new and creative way that hadn't been done before. It was so good. 
Yeah. I was tempted to write, hey, 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 no bribes, unless they go to me. <laughs> <laughs> Suze, I wanted to know on your battle spoon, the the L and F you put, or the S, the L and S you put on it, they're like oversized, right? They're like proportional yeah. to the, yeah, that was neat. Oh, I, I, I got so distracted by this post, I totally forgot that we're still recording and we should be continuing here. That happened to me too. <laughs> that happened to me when I saw it. I was opening up Instagram for some Holy, other reason. That's it, like, it, that's it, like it. psychedelic wood. That's incredible. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Dominic. Do you have more wood just like that? <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and would you be willing to package it and ship it to me? <laughs> um, I can make yeah. a spoon first and then send it. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Uh, that is gorgeous. Ooh. I have a that spoon, spoon was gorgeous too. Yeah. Wait a minute. That spoon is beautiful. I wonder what gives Plum that heartwood that looks like it's got crayon coloring in it. It's yeah. it's so different from like the heartwood sapwood split in walnut or apple. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I think we are at the end of. I think we've I was gone just through. putting the, the spoon yep. next to the bow to see um, the size. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Wow, super, super impressive work on the part of everybody. Well done, as always, one and all. So uh, just to recap here and, and to, to finish this off, thank you so much, Matt. Uh, I know you've already left to go to your um, market for, to, for the day, but fantastic template, uh, mm -hmm. fantastic job stepping up everybody. Uh, you've done some really cool stuff. Uh, fantastic job to everybody out there who couldn't be here on the session today. Um, but just to, to also re-mention our next challenge is a template that is posted up on riseupandcarve.com. Um, it is a template provided by Mr. Dan Lawrence from the UK and it is a spectacular spoon, uh, eating spoon template. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this one. It's got that, you know, by now classic Dan Lawrence asymmetry going on that is just always so, so beautiful. Um, and uh, yeah, so thank you everybody for, for being part of this show and tell and for uh, rising up to the uh, spoon challenge and being part of our rise up a community. So I really, really you, uh, Chuck. love you, all Chuck. you guys. So thank Thanks, you so Chuck. much. Thanks, Chuck. All right, cheers everyone. I will stop recording.